London Heathrow. Host to 78 million passengers, nearly half a million flights, and one very unusual animal reception center. Animals passing through Heathrow come here to be checked in. Oh, he's really cute. Also known as the Ark, it's equipped to welcome almost any species through its doors. Its feet are massive, not that big. From reptiles and livestock to pets and predators. It's up to the Ark to make sure everyone is clear to enter the country. Oh, textbook, Dan, textbook. More than 200,000 animals passed through last year alone. And its dedicated team of over 40 staff are on hand every hour of every day. Where's our water pot? And are always prepared to expect the unexpected. Ooh. <laughs> Today on Animal Airport, a cat called Mischief is living up to its name. Can I get a supervisor to cat women? A rescue dog with a taste for adventure checks in from Vietnam. We want to still travel, that's what we love doing, and we're pretty sure Jimmy likes it too. And some Australian arrivals are causing trouble for the animal attendants. Heathrow sees around 50 million holidaymakers through its doors each year. And while the two-legged variety of traveller use the airport terminals to get through customs, all animals in transit must visit the Ark to be checked they're here legally and free from disease. We are very excited to see Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, our, little our little Jimmy who's <laughs> come from Vietnam. In reception, travellers Jade and Ollie are patiently waiting to be reunited with a dog they've brought back from Vietnam. It was uh, New Year's Eve and um, we'd been talking to the guy who ran the hostel and he basically said, I've got something that I want you to take, just see what you think. And we were like, what is he talking about? And he turns his phone around and shows us a picture of these uh, five little, tiny, tiny little puppies and our eyes just kind of like lit up. We'd been talking about getting a dog for ages, but we got the kind of like the leftover one and we called him Jimmy. We completely fell in love. Named after singer Jimi Hendrix, for the next three months, he led the rock star lifestyle touring 600 miles through Vietnam, including some two wheel action that shouldn't be copied here. We took him on the motorbike with us. It's like the ultimate of like putting dogs putting their head out the window because like he's just got the air in his face on the motorbike the and whole he, time. And he loves it because he sort of leans, you with know, the bike. leans with the bike as <laughs> we do. But Jimmy's future could have taken a very different turn. Vietnam, they eat, they eat dogs in, in the north of Vietnam, and he's one of the breeds that they um, that they Words. do eat. He is a, he's a meat dog. So uh, we always wanted to like dress him up and make him look as much like a pet as possible. So you know, a nice collar, a nice scarf. Yes. Um, and it makes him look cuter, it makes him look more friendly. So when Jade and Ollie headed home, there was no way that they were leaving him behind. We started the process about like, about six months ago. So to start with, like, you have to get the blood tested and there's a lot of different vaccinations and various things to go through. Yeah. It's all fairly straightforward. As Vietnam is a high-risk country for rabies, Jimmy not only had to be vaccinated, he also needed an extra blood test to make sure the injection had worked before he could fly to the UK. Everything seems to have gone fine so far and uh, yeah, we just can't wait to see it. As they continue to wait in reception, Animal Health Officer Shannon has to make sure all the preparation done by Ollie and Jade in Vietnam is correct before she can let Jimmy join them. We are a rabies-free country and obviously we want to keep it that way. We get quite a lot of um, rescue animals come through um, from all different countries. We have to be quite strict on what we do and it is just to prevent um, the disease outbreak here because it can be, it's fatal to humans. We want to still travel, that's what we love doing and we're pretty sure Jimmy likes it too. Only time will tell if everything has been done to get Jimmy and his new family back on the road.
long-distance international travellers are familiar visitors to the Ark. Whether cherished pets or exotic zoo transfers, staff here have to be ready to welcome pet passengers as travel-weary as their human counterparts. Supervisor Shan is overseeing the arrival of a large group of animals from Australia who, due to weather delays, have now been in their travel boxes for more than 24 hours. So I think in total it's 20 boxes, um, should be 8 boxes of birds and 12 marsupials, I believe. So quite a large shipment. We've got some wallabies, um, possaroos, wombats, um, galahs, cockatoos and some turkeys, I think. The animals are on their way to a zoo in Cambridgeshire to be part of a new Australian enclosure. And obviously it's such a long flight from Australia anyway without the delays, so I um, just want to kind of get them back as soon as possible and make sure they're all okay. As there are birds on board, masks will have to be worn to protect them from airborne diseases. First off, wombats. Oh, he's digging in all the paper. <laughs> Ground-dwelling marsupials unique to Australia. They're well known for their stocky physique. An average adult is less than a metre from nose to tail, but can weigh in at nearly 40 kilos. God, he's heavy, isn't he? 20 new arrivals is a big influx for the centre. Oh, that's covered in spider webs. This is a wallaby. This is a wallaby, OK. Yeah. So we've got a swamp wallaby in here. We're a bit full already. <laughs> Some of our rooms already occupied by stuff that's been um, delayed because of the snow. The animals will be given food and water during their short stay. But staff won't release them from their crates unless they have to. Catching and reboxing animals can be a stressful and risky process. I don't think I've ever seen a wombat before. But they still have to be prepared for escapees. I hope you won't need it. Yeah. <laughs> Each animal will have to be checked against the paperwork to ensure they're all clear to enter the country. And Shan spots a problem straight away. We potentially have a problem with one of the galah parrots. They are meant to all have rings on uh, one of their legs with the identification number on, and one of them uh, doesn't have a ring on either leg. So potentially that could be problematic, because obviously the only way we would identify them is with either a ring or a microchip. Um, and without that, then we're a bit in trouble, I think. It looks like it could be a long morning for Sean. Apart from the odd surprise shipment, the bread and butter of the centre are the tens of thousands of pets that pass through each year. And intern Dan is dealing with a more regular arrival, a pet cat. But there's nothing regular about mischief. Yeah, I don't think it likes me. Mischief has flown in from South Africa, alongside sibling Smudge, to rejoin their family who have moved to the UK. Uh, we arrived this morning and then they said it's about a four to eight hour wait. It's been a year process and um, I haven't seen them for 18 months. They've both been given clearance to leave, but while Smudge waits obediently in her box, Mischief is having none of it. Go in your box. Just playing with me. I prefer an aggressive dog to an aggressive cat. Interns must learn to handle all animals, even the ones they're not so sure of. But in the case of mischief, it's easier said than done. I get along with them. It's just that when um, when there's an aggressive cat, I uh, kind of um, take a step back and say, like, this is this is probably not a good idea. After struggling for 15 minutes with no success, Dan radios for backup. Hi guys, uh, can I get a supervisor to cat wing, quarantine cat wing, to get an aggressive cat into a box? Thanks. Dan has a bit of history when it comes to aggressive cats. I got scratched once when I, and then I didn't have all my rabies uh, vaccinations, so it's bad memories. I don't want to be scratched again. <laughs> yeah. It's a good job then that Supervisor Stuart has turned up to help. 
Stu, this cat is terrible. Is he? Every time I try to go near it, it will try and scratch me. I mean, cats are so unpredictable as well, that's the problem. And they're fast as well, so you don't want to be stuck in that kennel and the cat's bouncing between the walls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're lying, don't we? No. It really doesn't want to go in that box. So, a bit of an unpredictable one, this one. He comes over all friendly, wants to rub up against your legs, and then turns into this devil cat. Even with all his experience, Stuart isn't having much luck either. I just can't work him out at the moment, that's a problem. Time for the guys to think of a plan B. In the dog wing, Jimmy, the rescued meat dog from Vietnam, has been waiting to get all his paperwork signed off so he can be allowed into the country. And it's good news. The staff are satisfied he's rabies free. So I'm just going to get Jimmy from his kennel. Um, he's coming from Vietnam today. I'm going to reunite him with his owner. So these owners have been waiting quite a few hours now, um, just because the procedure can take a while, especially when we're busy and with customs. So I think the owner is very excited to see Jimmy. Hi! Hello, are we ready to go home? Come on, I like your bandana. Yeah. He's very happy and I'm sure he'll be even happier in a moment. <laughs> Can you get to be in the middle when they're reunited? Hey, who's that? So it's it's perfect. Jimmy has finally arrived in his new home country. Although he's not staying still for long. Just a few weeks later, he's back on the road. Although this time it's on four wheels, not two. We drove over to Norfolk and then we regrouped at home in Hertfordshire and then drove up here to, to Yorkshire. Now we're going to go off to Europe. Yeah, we're going to go to France. Yeah. And then we'll probably go down through the Alps towards the city and see what happens. He was a bit uneasy at first. Yeah, I think he likes the motorbike more actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but cars have been a bit troublesome for him, but he's getting better, definitely. And Jimmy's journey from orphan to adventurer has been inspiring others too. So we've got a lot of um, friends and people we know in Vietnam who are looking to bring their dogs and cats over uh, to England. It's quite easy, really, once we yeah. once we got all our ducks in a row. Um... It was just a very long process, a hundred percent worth it, and he's so he is so so happy. <laughs> it's amazing. He's got a little home now, so he loves it. At Heathrow, in the animal reception centre's isolation wing. Supervisor Shan is processing a shipment of 20 animals from Australia. She's got the doors firmly shut. And it's a good thing too, as one of the travel-weary galahs has made a bid for freedom. Oh, yeah. Catch you in the line. Come on. Yeah, that's OK. Do you want me to do anything, Suzanne? Once staff have got their hands on it, the flighty bird checks out against its paperwork. But one of his travel companions has forgotten his passport. This could be the end of the road for this galah. Without a ring, there's no way of identifying it. And no evidence it's cleared for international travel and free of diseases. Do you want me to check the box? There's no. There's no sign of the ring in the cage. 
Not saying no. You want to have a look just in case. The unidentified bird is separated from the rest of the group until the staff are instructed on what to do with it. <laughs> Birds checked. Time to move on to the marsupials. These are the first wombats to join a British zoo in over 30 years. This is the first time in my life I've ever seen a wombat in person. I don't think they're very common in zoos over here at all. I've never seen one in a zoo. I've only ever briefly studied them at uni, <laughs> but that's it. Oh, hi. Oh, he's massive. Hello. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, I'm not letting go. Oh, I'd don't like worry. to give you some food. The wombats all check out. The staff just need to top up their water for the last leg of their journey. This should be the easy part. Right, you, here's the towel if you want to buy anything like that, not me. Here's a drink. Nice. Oh, be careful, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have a drink, mate. The wallabies have a bit more room to move around in their boxes. And after their long journey, they're a little jumpy. Two of the wallabies check out, but... Oh, please, don't say that. For the third wallaby, there's a big problem. The number on its microchip doesn't match the paperwork. Yeah, look, 985-141-001-048-289-2 285 they have got a digit wrong. What seems like a small clerical error is in fact a serious issue for this wannabe. Okay, let's continue. Um, so one of the ones that we just read the chip for, um, that chip's not on any of their paperwork, so um, there's a microchip that is the same but the last digit's different, so potentially that one's going to have to stay as well. So. While 18 animals are on their way, the wallaby and the galah have been impounded, and their future is uncertain. Over in the cat wing, Traveller Mischief has been living up to her name. She's still refusing to get in her box, but Supervisor Stewart has a trick up his sleeve. This one's fine, yeah? yeah. Alright. Nice and dark inside, so... I just got Dan to get a bird net. We use these mostly to catch up birds, but they're really good for catching cats, because it's nice and dark, and literally, it's run into the net, or you scoop them up in the net, and then it's easier to put in the box there. It really does not want to go in that box. Right, go on. At last, mischief is safely in her container, and Dan can breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, I'm happy it wasn't me who had to do it. And with the drama concluded in the cat wing, the wait is over for owners Paolo and Jackie. Hello! Meow! <laughs> I had to call some backup. I am terrified of progressive cats. So. Oh, shame, and it had to be you. <laughs> but I'm grateful that <laughs> she's in the box. Thank you so much. Oh, yes, thank you. Hello, baby. Oh, hello, my baby. Oh, there we go. I'm so happy. Their room is ready, their scratch posts, their food, their water, their blankets. It's taken a year to get here. It's taken a year to get here. A year of planning. A year of planning. Mischief is off to cause mayhem elsewhere. In the isolation wing, 
Shan now has to find out what the future holds for the impounded galah and wallaby from Australia. So we just moved the wallabies down into the corridor just to keep it nice and quiet so it's away from the other animals in the consignment. Uh, some of the birds are being quite noisy and also we had some quite loud dogs barking as well. We've discovered that one of them has a completely different microchip to what's listed on all the paperwork so unfortunately that one's probably going to have to stay with us. I feel bad for the wallabies because obviously it's they're really stressed and it's not their fault that someone else has messed up the paperwork. All but two of the animals from the shipment will hopefully be leaving as soon as their customs cleared. But yeah, one of the galahs will be with us um, probably for about 10 days. We'll have to um, have the tests redone that are required for birds to be imported. And with regards to the wallaby, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with that as of yet. Impounding animals is a serious business. Sean needs to consult Deputy Manager Ross to discuss how best to proceed. Hiya, Sean. Hiya. Um, so, I don't know if Suzanne's let you know what's going on with all these Aussie lots. So, one of the galahs has got to stay, um, and one of, the, one, of the, one of the wallabies has got to stay as well. It's got the wrong chip number on all the paperwork. <laughs> it's a bleak outlook for the wallaby. Yep. But things are already looking up for the stranded galah. So a um, bit of good news at least, um, the galah can go. So um, apparently they realised a couple of weeks ago that its ring had actually fallen off. Um, they then microchipped it and applied for a new import permit, but they didn't put that in any of the paperwork and failed to let us know. So we've just scanned its microchip and everything matched up. So the galah can go at least. So it's just the wallaby that has to stay. The wallaby is released into its temporary accommodation, which is as dark as possible to keep it calm, while staff investigate what will happen to it. Mischief! Six weeks later, and Mischief has continued to make her mark at home. My husband has a few scratches already. She loves to, to attack your toes. When I named her as a kitten, I didn't quite expect that she would really live up to her name as being mischievous. Jimmy is enjoying his new life on the open road. And the shipment of Australian animals made it to their new home, where they were reunited with their stranded wallaby friend, whose microchip issue was eventually resolved. <laughs>